here are your favorite tips and tricks for Tinkercad. Moving around in the 3D design software like Tinkercad is essential. You probably already know that you can do that by moving this cube on the left. We can zoom in and out using simply the scroll wheel. And if you right click, so secondary click on your mouse, you can also orbit around. But how can we pan? It's not very obvious here in Tinkercad. So the trick is you must press shift on your keyboard and then right click. If you got shift down instead of orbiting around the object, you will be panning left and right, up and down. Again, Without shift, when you right click, you're orbiting like that. When you press the shift down, you're panning the camera left and right, up and down. All right, so that's all three moves you need to know. Zoom in and out, orbit around, and hold shift to pan. With those three movements, you can adjust the angle and get this perfect view for your 3D object. Keep in mind, we are not zooming or panning or rotating to the center of the screen. We are zooming, panning, rotating to our cursor. So if you put the mouse on the left here and zoom in, I zoom to the left. If it's on the right, I zoom to the right. Same with rotations, orbiting around, and of course, panning. We're kind of using the mouse to push ourselves around. Let me show you how we can round corners in Tinkercad. Open up the shape menu on the right. Scroll all the way down to shape generator. From here, the fastest way is to simply click the search icon and search for meta fillet. There'll be one shape found. Just drag it in. We want to use it as a hole to make a hole inside another shape. So we can switch that straight away. And now we can simply reposition that. Make it tall enough as well. You will have to select both shapes and group them together. And take a look. We got a nice rounded corner on this side. Of course, I could drag out another copy of the shape and round another corner. Keep in mind, in this section of the shape menu, we can also search for shapes that are already rounded. If you type round at the top, you found eight shapes with some rounded corners already, like this rounded cube. Take a look, we got cube that is already rounded all around. So that's really helpful. So here are two ways of doing it. You can grab this shape, or you can do the shape yourself if you like, and then use it as the hole and group with the regular solid shape. Or search for already rounded shapes in this last section, shape generators, when you've got hundreds of shapes that are not that popular. Some of them are submitted by users. Let me show you how to place a SVG, a scalable vector graphics, in your Tinkercad project. Simply click import. And now they will inform us that we can drag and drop 2D or 3D files here. So as you may know, the vector graphics is in 2D, They're like logos and symbols. So I got one SVG ready. I'm going to simply drag and drop this. As you can see, it's Apple logo in SVG format. It's a lot of large, so I would just scale this down to maybe 15%, like that, and I will click Import. After a moment, the object will appear. Even though this was a flat 2D SVG, the program will generate this uh, 3D-like object for you. If you want to change the height of it, just move the middle point down to one to make it very flat or other way around you can move it up as well you can modify the color easily 
and this way you can put any SVG smaller than 25 megabytes into your Tinkercad. It's really nice starting point for your 3D project. Hey there, let me show you how you can make a hole in an object using Tinkercad. So first we need a solid object. You can select from groups like basic shapes, your favorite objects, or any other structure that is available on the right side. So I will stay with basic shapes. We will do a classic cube here. We can make it way larger by pulling the corner. We can make it way higher by pulling this middle control point like that. All right, so how can I now make a hole in this object? We need another object that we're going to use as the hole. So let's say I got the cube again. Let me change the color of this one. So this blue one will be used as the object that created a hole in this bigger one. So be sure to position this object, the second one, correctly, exactly in the location that you need that hole to happen. Then we're going to transform this object into the hole type. So in my case, I will just move it up here. I want to put it kind of like inside this object, a bit lower. Okay, and now I'm changing the second box from solid to hole. It will become this gray transparent like color. But that's still an object inside another object, not the hole. Yes, so now the final step. Let's select both of them. So both shapes are selected. The red one is a solid object and the smaller one is the whole object. And now we're going to group them together. So click the group button at the top. And here it is. We create a hole in object using a different one that was set up as the whole type. And here it is, we create a hole in that box using the smaller box. So the final step, if you want to create a hole, you set up everything nicely, is to group them together and then you will get this result. Keep in mind, you can even ungroup them and it will be back to this. So we can modify this another one right now. And then we can group them again. And here's another hole. Now we turn it into kind of L shape. So that's non-destructive way. We can always group and ungroup them multiple times. I just have created this brand new document in Tinkercad. So how can I save this project? The good news is the project is safe from the first moment you create it. It will be saved automatically every few seconds in this cloud storage provided on Tinkercad. You can rename it here at the top and I suggest to click on this generated name and put your, you know, your own name here so you know which project is it. If you want to see it in that cloud storage that they provide, you can click on the logo. It will take you kind of back to this view and you can see all of your projects here. So here it is, project one, say a few seconds ago. So by default, the program will save your work here inside a Tinkercad app in your browser. Is there an option to save it in the local computer or to send to somebody? We can use export and send to options here on the right. So we can send to, I can download a quick picture of my design because that's sometimes all we need, just show a picture of what you're working on. You can also share it by inviting other people here. There's a button to invite others via email. And we can kind of take this design forward using more professional apps like Autodesk Fusion. So that's the send option. How about export? In this case, we can download a local file. So we can get uh, files for 3D printing like .object. STL. There's also a flat file SVG here for using like cutters and lasers. So as you can see, 
your project is safe by default in the cloud. But we can also click export to download a file that can be used to share with others opening other 3D software and even 3D print. As you can see, there's a support for multiple brands of 3D printers. How can we add text in Tinkercad? Text tool is part of a basic shapes group. So be sure you are in basic shapes here at the very top mark with this red cube. Then you will see a text tool right here. You can simply drag it out. You are able to modify the text simply by typing over here in this pop up box. You can modify the font as well. There are currently limited options for that. All right, and there are three sliders below. Height of the letter, you can get all the way down to 0 0.1 if you want it to be like almost flat text. We can add some bevel to it like that. And there's also a segment option with the last slider. All right, of course, at the top we got our colors. So you can customize that as well. Text can be used as the solid or as the whole if you want to kind of use the text to make a hole in another object. That's possible as well. So that's how you add your own text in Tinkercad. Aligning objects in 3D space can be quite tricky. Luckily, in the Tinkerpad, there is Align option. So if you've got two objects, you can select them both and then select Align here at the top right corner. Now we got all of those black points because the program is asking us which line of alignment we want to use. There are many. So Keep in mind, you can align them multiple times. First, I can use this middle line between them to align them to the center. Now we can align them to the bottom. Just like that. You can also click on this object. So we will align to that certain object. Now, they're both in exact same location. This can be really handy if one of your object is a hole and one is a solid and you try to make some kind of group like this. All right, let's try it one more time. This time, I'll place one object here and one will be here. Remember, you must select them both. You can click on the first one, hold shift and click on the second one. Now, alignment. And you can click on those black points if they are the one that you plan to use. If you cannot see the area you plan to use before, click on one object to make it a key object. And now we're going to align to that object. So I can use the center of the first object as the alignment guide. This way I move only the green one and the red one stay exactly as it was. How can we cut shape in half in Tinkercad? To do that we will need to draw additional shape that we're going to use to subtract from this base shape. So this additional shape should be a bit larger. In my case, I'm going to use a cube. We can grab this box here, the first one that is already set up as a hole. So we don't want to use the solid object with the color. I want to use the second option here. The hole look like transparency a bit. Then we need to align this object to cover half of the original shape. So it's good to kind of look at it from the top view. Because we need to be sure we got half of this object. To make this process easier, we can grab a ruler tool from the left, zoom in a bit, and we can snap it here to the center, just like that. 
and then when you move your other shape you know exactly where the center is and also we can easily scale up this shape so we want to cover this part and now we can kind of scale it up all the way through scale it down to that side and in my case i will need to make it a bit higher it's going to be larger than the original shape you don't need to make it like perfectly just be sure it's larger and that's good enough all right now we simply need to select both and group them together and here it is we got only half of the shape so we use one larger shape to cut another shape in half keep in mind this larger shape need to be set up as the whole as this transparency not as the solid color let me show you how we can easily move the camera around in your Tinkercut project. By default, we can grab this cube here at the top left corner. And by rotating this cube, you can rotate the scene. Also, by tapping on a face, like a top face, you can jump straight to that. If you click on it, it will move the camera to exact position. But it's not very handy if you are working on something in your design. That's why you can also press a right side of your mouse. So the right click will do the very same thing when you can rotate the whole scene around. How about zooming in and out? That's your scroll wheel. And keep in mind, you are zooming in and out, not to the center of the screen, but to the position of your cursor. So if I place my mouse cursor on the left here, I will zoom in to that position. Let's zoom out. If I place it on the right side of the scene, I'm zooming in to this position. It's really important to understand that we are not zooming in to the center, we are zooming in to where the mouse is. All right, so we know how to rotate and zoom in. There's one more move that can help you out. We can pan the camera around. So if you press and hold shift on your keyboard and then press the right button of your mouse, instead of rotating, you will be panning like that. So you can kind of move the camera without changing the angle in this case. Release the shift and you're rotating. Press the shift and then right side of your mouse, you're panning. Alright, so we got all basic camera moves cover. Keep in mind there are some additional buttons on the left, like home view. We can have a fit to see all. There is zoom in and out button. And you can adjust to switch to the flat view as well. Okay, so right click of the mouse to rotate or the cube. You are zooming in to the mouse, not to the center, using the scroll wheel. If you press Shift and use the right button of your mouse, you will pan the camera around. And that's all you need to know to get started. Let me show you how you can take orthographic projection screenshots directly in Tinkercad. So here I am. And now to present my projects nicely on screenshots, I can move my camera first to like isometric view. So I kind of tap here at this corner between front and right and top here. And the camera will kind of adjust. Take a look. I just click at the corner and here it is. I zoom in a bit and I can snap my very first screenshot. It's a print screen or Windows print screen on Windows, or you can press command shift number three on Mac or number four, so you can limit this space, just like that. All right, so that's the overall view in 3D, but our task is to turn it into flat 2D images of each side of your design. So now I'm going to double tap front on this cube here. Okay, almost good. Now we need to switch off this to the flat view. So click on this icon. Way better. All right, now we can snap another screenshot. This is the front view of my design. 
now move to the right side so i double tap on the right side of the cube here it is the right side i snap another screenshot now i double tap the top and here we are from the top and i got all four screenshots in just two minutes so remember the key is to switch from perspective mode from this mode into flood mode like that and then you can type the name of the face that you need you can just tap on it and you will get that angle all right keep in mind you can also switch off the floor if you need so you can click settings and you can disable grid and the floor will disappear so you may want to have that so let's repeat our isometric screenshot again and here it is without the floor and then i can repeat my top screenshot again this time without the grid below all right now we just need to put all of those four screenshots nicely together in another software and you are done i hope this short tutorial was helpful i will see you in the next one